moves like Jagger isn't just some catchy song, but a lifestyle for the Rolling Stones frontman Mick Jagger on and off the stage. Leading one of the biggest musical acts of all time, the Rolling Stones dominated the rock and roll era from the 60s and are still going strong as a group to this day. With tales as old as time of rock stars sleeping around with an array of women and men, Mick himself allegedly sleeping with over 4,000 women over the course of his six decades long career. Yeah, y'all heard that right. Where sex, drugs, and rock and roll wasn't just some hippie slogan, but a way of life. For Mick, his persistent aura and charismatic personality won over model and singer Marsha Hunt back in 1969. The relationship lasted less than a year, but in those months, Marsha's life would go from hair musical star to the mother of Mick Jagger's first child when she gave birth to their daughter that he tried to disown. More on that later. Karis Jagger in 1970 Mick, and I quote, developed a taste for beautiful black girls after becoming infatuated with Marsha and got his personal assistant to get in contact with her, nicknaming her Miss Fuzzy due to her signature afro Mick began writing love letters, sending gifts, and writing songs like Brown Sugar based on his newfound melanated beauty. The 10-month union seemed cute while it lasted and those who actually knew of the secret entanglement at the time say that Mick rarely spoke about it or their shared daughter, Karis. Maybe, just maybe, because Nick was also involved with another woman at the time, a 22-year-old singer from the UK named Marianne Faithful ironically and sadly enough attempted to end her own life due to ongoing issues, stacked with the pressure of Jagger's affairs. Marsha and Mick's affair, although sweet in the beginning, had become turbulent nearing its end when Mick decided that he'd had enough of his fetish or a uh, relationship jumping ship and denying baby Karis altogether resulting in numerous court orders. So where does this relationship stand today? Let's take a look at one of Rock and Roll's most notorious love quarrels. In her early 20s, Marsha got her big break when she starred in the 60s hippie rock musical Hair. During a time when Jim Crow laws were freshly lifted, Marsha would become a poster child for the Black is Beautiful movement and her larger-than-life, luxurious afro would become a signature staple within the movement. While she was busy starring in musicals and making a name for herself across Europe, Mick Jagger just so happened to be developing an interest in Miss Hunt, or what he called a developing taste in pretty black women. Mick's assistant somehow was able to get in contact with Marsha, told her that the Rolling Stones wanted her to do a shoot for an ad for their song, Honky Tonk Women, which she refused to do at first, given the reason of not wanting to look easy and wanting to set a good example for black women. Of course, that little intuitive nudge didn't last long because not too long after, Mick had convinced her to do the shoot and a few days later, Jagger called her up and their low-kept affair had begun. During the 9th through 10 month relationship, those closest to Jagger said that he became so infatuated with Marsha, he'd often visit her during the evenings and write love letters to her while she was away. These strings of letters were later sold at an auction at Sotheby's in London for nearly $300,000. The letters were ultimately credited for inspiring the Rolling Stones' controversial song, Brown Sugar, released in the early 70s. Not to get confused with D'Angelo's song of the same name, with lyrics like, Gold Coast slave ship bound for cotton fields, hear him whip the women just around midnight, oh got me quitting and brown sugar just like a black girl should. Yeah, we'll leave it up to you to decide the true meaning of the song. During Mick's mini love phase, he was also seeing British singer and actress Marianne Faithful, whom apparently was no longer a focal point in Mick's life despite still going along with the thrill and notoriety from being involved with Mick Jagger. But the thrill didn't stop the anguish Marianne felt due to Mick's infidelity, on top of word getting out of Marsha and Mick's affair and while at a stay in Sydney, Australia for Mick's movie role in Ned Kelly, Marianne, with an ongoing heroin addiction added to the stress of her lover falling for someone else, attempted to take her own life in their shared hotel room by taking 150 sedative pills. While Marianne was fighting for her life in a coma that lasted six days, Jagger was sending Marsha those middle school level love letters. While on a date, Mick proposed the idea of Marsha giving him his first biological child, given that he had been a surrogate father for Marianne's son. After much convincing, she agreed and their quest to have a planned pregnancy had been set in motion. But just in a few months after, Mick's love spell began to fade away and Marsha had no longer been a priority in his life. 
She moved out of his home he had invited her to stay in for the time being and while she was exiting, two new girls, Janice and Catherine James, would take her spot. On her last leg of pregnancy, Hunt was having a hard time working and asked Mick for money for her and the baby. Despite being worth millions, Jagger sent Marsha a measly $200 and basically told her to make it work. Marsha gave birth to their daughter, Karis Jagger, on November 4, 1970 at St. Mary's Hospital with Jagger nowhere in sight. But he made sure to send flowers and dispatch this car to pick up Marsha and their newborn to take them home. Mick would come around to see his baby girl every so often but for the most part was absent from her life. He wasn't bad, says Marsha, and I knew before I had Karis that he was going to move away from England. He had always said he could be a good absent father. Almost a decade would go by without Mick being actively involved in Karis' life, and despite him doing little things here and there, sent little to no money when needed so Marsha took it in her own hands to send him court actions, her lawyer setting up stings, one sting being where Marsha would ask to meet up with him at the Albert Memorial and her lawyers would jump out to serve him a paternity writ. In June of 1973, after three hearings, Mick agreed to set up a trust fund for Karis in exchange for Marsha signing papers stating that Mick wasn't the biological father. Flash forward to 1979, LA courts had ruled Mick as being the biological father of Karis and forced him to pay $1,500 in child support. Even though he was absent for a good portion of Karis's life and the relationship with her mother Marsha was a little strained, Mick was spotted at Karis's graduation from Yale University in 1992, camera in hand, looking like a proud dad and even walked her down the aisle on her wedding day. Catherine James, the model Jagger had moved into his home, had this to say when asked why Mick denied baby Karis and downplayed his relationship with Marsha. She said, I think the problem was that Marsha wanted something from him like money. At the beginning, she had told him she would deal with everything to do with the baby herself. She said, don't worry about this, I'm going to take care of it, and then she was suing him. I think that put Mick off, to say the least. She goes on to say, he wouldn't have anything to do with her, I actually got to know Marsha at the time and she didn't like him very much, she was very angry at him. The anger eventually subsided and in 2006, after the death of Mick Jagger's father, Karis and Mama Marsha were seen being comforting figures to Mick at his time in need despite him not really being there for Marsha's time in need when it was discovered that she was basically broke and had developed stage 3 breast cancer in 2004. Despite their rocky relationship, Marsha and daughter Karis continued to show up for Mick when needed. As of recent, Mick has been seen spending time with his oldest daughter and Marsha and Mick's relationship seems to be that of a neutral friendship. It wasn't based on a simple love affair, Marsha later confessed. It was based on two people having mutual admiration for each other. As of 2021, Marsha is a biographer and Mick seems to have cooled down a bit with his affairs and toying with people's emotions. He became a father for the eighth time at the age of 73 to his now 30-something-year-old girlfriend and is focused on placing his family as a priority. We did say that he's cooled down a bit, not completely dried out. As far as Mick and Marsha's relationship goes, the two have made amends and he's made an effort to be there for his daughter over the years. Were you surprised by any of this? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below.